Hello everyone and welcome to the demonstration of the QC database detailer. We'll be talking about this new feature and what it's for and how to use it. We'll do a brief demonstration. Uh, what is the detailer for? Uh, it is for creating spool drawings based on isometric drawings. Uh, this is for contractors who receive PDF or printed isometric drawings and then they have to do a BOM takeoff and create well maps from these drawings. Uh, this detailer program will make it easier to do that inside QC database. Uh, as you create these drawings, a BOM will be created uh, after you publish each one. Uh, when you publish them, weld maps and flange maps will automatically be created. Uh, this program is designed to be a lot faster than the Redliner. I know we have contractors who have used the Redliner in the past to create drawings from scratch. The detailer is going to have a command line interface, meaning you can type commands and create a drawing without using your mouse. Uh, that will make it a lot faster for a lot of people. You can use your mouse as well. Uh, as you add sections, pipe cut lengths and center to center dimensions will be calculated based on the takeoffs of the fittings. Uh, and this is a 3D, 3D drawing program as opposed to the detailer, which is just a 2D drawing program. This will not replace the red liner. The red liner will still be used for creating changes on existing drawings. Uh, it's easy to use and it's easy for field users to quickly create their changes uh, which can be updated later. So some quick notes on the detailer. Uh, the detailing permission is required to use this new feature. Each drawing created can only be changed and updated by the original creator of each spool. Now, this is unlike the detailer where users can copy a detail, uh, red line draft and make changes and pick up where someone left off. In this case, people will be locked into each drawing they create. Uh, spools are updated after being published will be treated as new revs. Just like the red liner when you make a change, that new drawing you create will be added as a revision layer to the well map. Old revisions can still be found and then reinstated. An important note for people who export data from QC database, we have added a spool number column to all CSV and grid view tables. This is so users can filter for only spools or only uploaded drawings where the spool number is zero. This column was added after the drawing description column on all tables. Drawing description is the file name usually. Uh, please check your pivot tables. If you have Excel files that with pivot tables that use these uh, exports, please make sure that this added column does not offset some of your columns on your pivot tables. Uh, the BOM created by these drawings can only be accessed from the grid view for now. We are looking at ways to expand that, maybe adding a CSV download for the BOM. Uh, we think the grid view should work well for now. That way only admins have access to the BOM. Uh, and then lastly, before drawing with this program, you have to populate the spec with material and approve it before drawing. So this is different than the redliner where anyone can just start redlining a drawing. Uh, detailers will have to populate each spec with the material that's acceptable in that spec. That prevents you from going out of spec with your drawings. So this demo, we, in this demo, we are going to populate the spec with some material. Uh, we are going to approve that material for use in the detailer. We're going to create a new spool. 
and then using the drawing program we're going to add components we're going to add details to some of those components we're going to do dimensioning uh, continuing to the next spool and then we're going to update and manipulate the BOM uh, this BOM will be useful for ordering material feel free to comment in the comment section on YouTube or email me at larry.drew at qcdatabase.com if you have any comments or questions I'll try to address these before the stream ends that way they can be captured on video for later use So now I'm going to go into QC database. I have a demo database set up. I have one job added with two hydro test packages in this demo database. If you go over here, you can see that I have a new spools button. Uh, if I click on this, it'll show me all the spools I have in the database right now. Right now I have one through five. Uh, similar to flanges and punchless items, these spools are numbered from the database. As you add a spool, it will receive a number. Uh, you can see that these spool numbers are actually in the thumbnail, make, making it easier for users to see uh, from a distance and reference them quickly. Uh, each spool also has a QR code. This way people can pull up the spool and either go to the mapper or to the detailer. Also note that you can search for spools by number using the normal search function. It's the second from last option, search spools. If I search for spool four, it will pull up spool four and uh, show me all the information on it. Uh, elevation, northing, easting, etc. Uh, you can see that I have two out of three wells completed for this spool. That means spool four was already published and the shop has already started welding on it. If this spool wasn't published, it would this would be blank. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go back to the job. And I'm going to click on the demo job. Uh, demo H1 is a package I created uh, to add some spools to. So I'm going to go there really quick just to show you what it looks like. So as you can see, this client drawing, I created this using the Redliner. Uh, but this, this is a stand-in for a PDF that the client sent you. Uh, there's no data associated with this it's just a flat file uh, you can see they called out three field welds uh, creating a bomb from this means reading from the drawing and then adding it to an excel file uh, so if you receive flat client drawings like this with no added information the detailer is going to be for you so i'm going to open up this drawing in the mapper and you can see that I have these new markups, these spool markups, spool one, spool two. These are drawing continuations, uh, just like the ones that you would add to jump to the next drawing. But these ones are special for spools. Uh, you can also see there's a progress bar just below each one showing the weld progress so if the drawing has been published it will give you a weld progress for that drawing otherwise it will just say not published now, this is useful for foremen and inspectors out in the field who want to get progress on the spools in the shop just by glancing at the large format isometric they can see the progress of each spool on that drawing So now I'm going to click on this. 
Uh, when you click on these continuations, you can open up one of these spools in the mapper or in the detailer if you have permissions. Otherwise, it will just take you to the mapper. So you can see I have one weld here. Uh, that was added from the detailer. So I'm going to exit all of this. I'm going to go back to the demo job. I'm going to go to package 2. And here I have another client drawing. It's the same drawing, but I'm going to go back through the process of adding spools and creating them for this drawing. Uh, but before we do that, we have to have approved material for drawing. So if you go to QC data and you go to line specs, I only have one spec in this database. It's the A2 spec, 5% RT, 450 pound test. Uh, you're, if you're familiar with QC database, you know how these line specs works. But now you can click on this edit and open up the material page. Uh, so we have different kinds of material that we can add to this spec. I've already added uh, three uh, different pipe options. To add more options, you can click add row uh, for pipe. Uh, you would type in the grade and you would type and you would add a range of pipe. So right now I already have up to 24 inch. So I'll do 24 inch to 30 inch for this line spec. And we'll use schedule 40. Bevel both ends and we will do ERW. If I click Save Changes to Pipe, you can see over here on the right that my first three entries have already been reviewed. To use this new 26 to 30 inch pipe in the detailer, I have to click here and review the data. Uh, so for outside diameter, 26, 28. 30. I'm just going to save that for now. Let's go to T's. We have a 2 inch by 2 inch T. Let's add another T. Let's make it a 1 inch by 1 inch 6M, 6 6,000 pound. socket weld forged uh, T. So again you can see that our first T was reviewed and this one requires review. Uh, so as you add this material QC database is going to try to guess the takeoff and the weight of the component and the pipe outside diameter. Uh, if it cannot find this data, it's going to show all zeros. Uh, the reason it can't find a wall thickness here is because we're looking at a socket weld uh, fitting. Uh, so after you verify the takeoff of the component, uh, the weight of the component, weight of water, uh, you can save this data as reviewed. You can change this if the data that you have is slightly different. And then it's going to say save custom data. So if you have this reviewed or custom icon over here, then the component is available to use inside the detailing program. If you look at L's, you can see that the columns are a little bit different. Uh, size, schedule, type, joint, street, yes or no, seamless. That would apply to uh, wrought fittings, not socket weld fittings. 
Uh, you can add unions, traps, strainers, couplings. I do have one two inch strainer added and we're going to show, we're going to use that in the program. Uh, couplings, half couplings, half couplings are treated like OLETs. Uh, OLETs over here we have a one inch OLET. Let's add a three quarter just as another example. That's going to be a socket. I'm going to use NA for outlet schedule since we're doing socket weld. Minimum header nominal pipe size will say one inch. Maximum will say four inch. We'll call it a 6,000 pound forged. So before you can review this, you can see here it says save row to load. So let's save changes to OLETs. And it says not found. So it did not find any data for this. Uh, so you're going to have to you're going to have to actually enter the throat to end takeoff, which as you can see in this image is from the bottom of the socket to the throat of the fitting. We'll just say it's a half an inch uh, for this example. Uh, you can see we have caps, plugs, flanges, valves. I have one gate valve in here. Uh, supports, I have two different supports in here. Miscellaneous, uh, this is just items that you wouldn't normally find. Uh, they'll just be rendered as a rectangle on the drawing. Uh, the last two options here, notes and details, these are a little different. Uh, notes are things that apply to different components. So note A is all pipe welds, MPS2 or smaller must be socket weld. That's a spec requirement. So if I go over to my L's, you can see that I have this note checked. I can click that to uncheck that box or click it to save it. Then I can click save changes. Uh, details. Details are images that are added to different components. Uh, in this example, I have a 6 inch random and 12 inch random detail. That way it jumps out at a user. I use, I color coded these differently. And I also have a strainer detail. Now you can see this strainer actually has some welds and some components added to it. So if I wanted to add a weld, I can add a one inch socket weld to this detail. That way when users uh, actually add this detail to a drawing, these welds will be automatically added. This material will be automatically added to the BOM. I'll show you how that works in just a second. So now that we've gone over how the material program works a little bit, we're going to go to the back to the job. We're going to open that up and we're going to go to the second package where I have this client drawing. If you look at this client drawing, you can see that I've mapped out the field welds on this drawing. I have three of them in all three places where they called out field welds. All the welds on the spools will be mapped by the program, but these ones will have to be added manually to your client drawing. To add a spool to this drawing, click add and there's a new spool button that will allow you to add a spool to a drawing. Click on that and draw out the spool indicator just like that. So now that you've done that, if you click on this drawing, we'll have to go to weld mode. Click on this spool six indicator and it will ask you if you want to open this in the detailer or if you want to open it 
in the detailer in a new tab. I recommend a new tab. That way you can take the Now you can take the existing drawing and move that to your other monitor. You can use that original drawing as a reference for creating this spool if you have two monitors. Uh, so first of all, in the detailing program, you're going to see a very simple interface. You have a north indicator, which you can move around. Uh, you have a elevation, northing, and easting uh, call out. You can change this. Let's say we're at elevation 200. Uh, if you type in 200, it's going to assume inches. So add a single quote. Northing, we'll say 120 foot, 6 inches. And then easting, we'll say 50 0.5 feet. Uh, you can see that the detailer will take any of your dimension inputs and figure out what you're trying to type, whether you use uh, this style of uh, uh, dimensions or if you were to type 200 foot 6.5 inches. Uh, it's still going to understand what you're trying to type. So for that example, it'll show 120 foot, six and a half inches. Uh, so why would you want to add uh, elevation, northing, and easting to a, to a spool drawing? Uh, that's just going to help you find where each drawing goes. As you start adding spools, this will be automatically calculated for the next drawing. Uh, so before we add anything, know that you can click this plus icon that's flashing and you can add pipe. This is a two inch drawing so you can click here to add six inch pipe. It's going to default to three inches long so you can right click this and we're just going to make it 12 inches long for now. And then you can click add here and add more material. But the way that this program is designed to work quickly is by using the command line up here in the upper right. So I'm going to type add L, which you can do by typing it out, or you can type E and click tab. And I'm going to click one and press enter. You can see that that added a new elbow to the drawing. Uh, it's going to face up or to the north when you add a component. So to change that angle of that component, uh, you can use the control P, which is the pivot command, or you can use the control E command, which is the eighth turn, which will rotate at 45 degrees. Uh, you can also right click on this BOM callout and you can manually type the degrees. So if we wanted a 30 degree offset or even a 5 degree offset or an 85 degree, if you were, if you had a 5 degree slope in the line, you could do something like that. So we're going to pull that drawing over here again. And it looks like I'm supposed to add a flange, a section of pipe, and a T. It looks like I got it carried away with myself a little bit. So I'm going to type the delete command. You can also abbreviate that to the DEL command and it will delete the material. So the first component we actually need is the flange. So I'm going to type add F click the tab button, flange. I'm going to click one and press enter. Next I'm going to click add pipe six. After you type 
the component that you want, you can also uh, type the dimension. And you, again, you can type this however you want. You could type it in decimal inches, decimal feet, or you can type it in pipe fitter style dimensions, 12 and 15 sixteenth inches. And we'll add that end to end of that pipe, one foot, zero and 15 sixteenths. Next, we need to add a T, two inch T. It looks like it's facing up automatically. Uh, next, we want to look at the dimensions here. It looks like this one's in the way a little bit. I can right click this and I can switch sides. That's the thickness of the flange. I can also use this to slide it up and down. Or you can double click this if you want to flatten it out or change the way in which it's skewed. Uh, we also see that our center to center dimension is uh, you know what else? It looks like we have this flange facing the wrong way. So I'm going to delete these two components. I'm going to use the control F command. That's going to flip that flange around. There, now I have an actual center of T to face dimension. Uh, so the control F is used for flanges. If you have them facing the wrong way, you can use control F to flip them back and forth. So now I can change the dimension of this pipe to get my center to center measurement, which according to this is three foot. So I have a couple options. I can use the dim command, dim one. One is the number on the bill of materials for this section of pipe. And I can change that to 2.5 feet I can try to get my three foot center to face, uh, but this is not ideal. What you really want to use is the CC command, CC one, three foot. That will calculate the length of the pipe needed to get a three foot face to center. You can also click that by, change that by right clicking on these dimensions. If I make that two foot, it'll change that for me. Just remember that if you just type something like three, it's going to think you mean inches. And that's a little crowded again. So I'm going to type CC one, three foot, or I can type 36 to get a three foot face to center. So now I have a T. I'm gonna use these PPI setting, which is pixels per inch. Actually expand this spool a little bit so it fills the drawing more. And if you click on the start of the drawing, you can center that how you want it. You can see I have two add buttons now. I can click on either one of these to add material, but if I want to switch the direction that I'm going in, you would use the switch command. That red arrow indicates which direction you're going to add materials. You can also just type the S command or hit. If I look at my drawing, you can see that there's a field well at the end of the T and on the bull head of the T. So this is actually our completed spool. So how do I keep adding spools? Well, before you go back to the drawing and add another spool indicator, type the spool command, and that will actually give you a continuation drawing. If I click on this spool seven, it takes me to the next page. 
And if I click on this, it will take me back to the spool I was on. We actually know that we need to create two spools off of that T. So we're going to run the switch command and type spool again. Now we have another spool, spool 7 and spool 8 coming off of that T. We just added two new drawings to the database uh, just by typing that command. And you can see that it automatically calculates your elevation, northing, and easting. When I jump to spool 8, you can see here that my uh, coordinates are changed automatically. I'm going to jump back to this spool to show you uh, how error correction works for this. Now that I created these two drawings, what happens if I change my center to center dimension? Uh, let's change it to 25 and a half inches. Whoops, we need to type CC1 for the BON number, 25.5 inches. Uh, you can see that it actually left our other drawings over here. And the reason it does that is because if you have to make a change to this spool, uh, it doesn't want you to just automatically drag these over. If you have to shorten this center to center, you're going to have to make this spool longer and change something in this spool to bring these back over to that T. Uh, once you do go open these up and you make those corrections, you can type the spool command again run the switch command to go to the other side and type spool again to correct those spools so now that they're attached to where they should be. Just to show you that one more time I'm gonna run the CC command CC 1 3 foot you can see that my continuations again are off so I'm gonna run the spool command I'm going to switch to the other side and run the spool command. So the spool command is used to add a spool and then again you use the same command to correct the elevation, northing, and easting of the spool after you've made a change. Uh, so now that we've we are done with the spool, let's continue to spool 8. You can see that our pointer is already facing up. Uh, this spool is very simple. It's just a piece of pipe and a flange. Uh, we're going to make this a random long. We're going to make this riser an out for our users. Uh, so looking at that drawing, it's 15 inches center to face. So we're going to make it add pipe 624. So there's going to be 24 inches of pipe. And then we're going to add flange 1. Uh, so now that we've made this a random long, we want to let users know this. I'm going to move this over here. If you right click on this call out for this piece of pipe, which if you've noticed, they have the end to end inside the BOM call out. If we right click this, we can add a detail. In this case, it's a six inch random. Now that's pretty big. It probably doesn't need to be that big. We could just do small render size. Now users know without a doubt that this is a six inch random, that this is an out uh, for their spool. Let's go back to spool six. That way we can jump to spool seven. Uh, for this drawing, I'm going to add, I'll make this one a random long too. It's six foot four, so we'll make this uh, seven foot long. That kind of fills up the whole drawing, so we're going to reduce the PPI to squeeze this down to the drawing. Uh, 
we're going to add an L for the riser and another section of pipe. Uh, it's 17 and 15 sixteenths center to center. So I'm just going to make it 12 inches long for now. I'm going to add another L. Let's do control P to get that to face the right direction. Now I can make this 17, 15, 16 inches. That'll calculate the exact cut length I need. Notice that the cut length is based on the takeoff, inch and 5 eighths, minus the socket weld gap, which is shown up here in the top of the drawing. Right now it's set at 1 eighth. If you need a 1 16th, socket weld gap. Go into the settings and you can change these uh, in the settings menu. This is also where you change drawing color, BOM color, uh, you can change BOM font color, border color. Uh, just for an example we'll make the border on this blue and save. Uh, now you can see that it changes the whole border of the drawing and all the information at the bottom blue. Now that we're completed with the spool, well, you know what we should do. We should add a detail for this showing that it's a six inch random. We'll make it small. Uh, this is a little hard to read, so we're going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, notice that if you have something that's kind of hidden on the drawing, you can change the north direction. If you have an OLED uh, sort of hiding in the back of the pipe, you can also rotate it slightly just to get a little bit different vantage point on the spool. Now that we're done with this one, we're going to type the spool command again. Now we have spool 9 added. Let's continue on to spool 9. If you right click, you can drag this up into the corner. Uh, so for spool 9, we have a section of pipe about 4 foot long, so I'm going to make this 5 foot long. Six is the number on here where I'm getting the 2 inch pipe, that's why I'm typing 6. And I'm going to make this 5 feet long. If we look at the detail or the uh, client drawing, you can see that we have an OLET, a nipple, and a valve uh, before the flange. So how do you add an OLET? You go to the command line and you click Add OLET. Let's type that again. OLET. Uh, this is a one-inch OLET in this case. You're going to type the dimension, that is, how far back from the end of pipe it is. So we're going to say 10 inches. So that's 10 inches from that end. If you want it to be 10 inches from the other end, you can click this and apply it. Let's try that again. Let's do dim one five foot. Let's do add OLED. Uh oh. Looks like I typed that wrong. Add OLED one four foot. 
So that gives us one foot from the other end. You can see that this adds another add button. So let's run the switch command. We'll do add. Looks like I have no nipples loaded in, but I do have pipe. Uh, one inch pipe, which is number three on the list, and three inches long. And then we add a valve. I only have one one inch valve in the system. Uh, so the valve is an example of what happens when it doesn't find a takeoff. So this takeoff was never approved in the spec. So if I know it in my head, I can just type four inches, four inch takeoff. I have my valve. That's what happens if you don't review and approve the material. You can still use the material. Uh, it's just not as convenient. Uh, notice that you can grab these dimension callouts when they're real tight like this and you can drag them around where you want them to be. You also double click these to switch uh, the direction that they're facing. Uh, so now that we're done with that side, we'll run the switch, a switch command, and we'll add that last flange. And I'm going to run a spool command as well. Now let's look at our drawing. What was that? That was 10 inches. So we actually have to change this to 10 inches. That was the correct dimension. We also want to add a detail saying that this is a six inch random. Let's center this a little more. You can see that my spool markup is in the wrong spot now. There we go. Let's continue to spool 10. Uh, so if we look at our client drawing, you can see that we have a strainer by itself. It's just one component. I'm going to create a spool drawing just for this one strainer for a couple reasons. One, so that it ends up on my BOM. Also because there's two one inch socket welds on the drain coming off the strainer cap. So if this is something you're going to do in the shop, uh, adding a drawing just for one spool is a good way to capture those welds. So I'm going to add strainer number one. You can see the strainer is similar to the flanges where it has a direction arrow. Down below it. You can flip that around with the flip command or control F. like that's not working actually. I have to make a note of that. You can use the pivot command to lay it flat or have it vertical. And for this strainer we're going to add a detail which is that last detail I added. And you can see this detail shows my two welds. If you hover over the two red circles, you can see the details for the welds. This one's a one inch socket weld, one inch socket weld. This actually says seal weld on it, but I, I added it as a socket weld. Uh, you can also see that even though this drawing only has one component, the strainer, it automatically added that three inch schedule 160, or I'm sorry, one inch, three inch long schedule 160 nipple and the 800 pound valve. That material was associated with this detailed drawing. 
That is why we have three numbers, two, one, three, added to this uh, call out. So you, fab, uh, fab welders will actually have the full list of material they need to create this strainer with the welded nipple and the welded valve. Uh, so now that we've created uh, a couple spools for this package, if you go up here and click package, you can see package detailer drafts. We have spool six, seven, eight, nine, ten is this drawing. Uh, let's go back to spool six. Now we're going to publish this drawing. To do that, you would click draft, publish this draft as a drawing. Uh, you have a couple options. It's automatically going to map welds and flanges. Uh, you can mark the welds for shop fab, which is the default. You can add blank heat number callouts, which is the default. Uh, you can also add blank UT reading callouts. UT readings aren't used that often, so by default it's not selected. I'll select it for this example. Uh, right now it says this is Rev0. Uh, if we want to change that, we can go down here and we can change that to Rev A if we want to. Uh, also, we can give this a unit line number, a sheet number. Uh, we can give it a service code, maybe cooling water, insulation thickness, we can say two inches. Uh, so there's a lot of different settings we can change on here. So now if I go back to draft and I publish this drawing, it says draft revision name A. Now the drawing is published. I can either go back to the detailer app or I can go to the mapping page. So this is my new drawing that I've added to QC database. You can see my welds are automatically mapped. My heat numbers are automatically mapped for all the material on here. Right now it's going to create an alarm because there's no MTR for it. This will be added later by QC. Also I have UT readings. Probably won't need a UT reading on the flange because it's a socket weld flange, so I'll delete that one. Now I also have these continuations. These are the same kind of continuations you're used to. Uh, if I click on this, it's going to say this draft has not been published yet. So let's open spool 8 in the detailer. We're going to publish this drawing. Yes. If I open that in the mapper, you can see I have another drawing published with one weld. You can see it's a random long. If I click on this, I can go down to this drawing. And since this one's published, it just takes me to the next drawing in the mapper. Let's go to spool 7. Open it in the detailer. We're going to click draft and publish this one as well. Now I'm going to publish all of these. So I'm going to go back to the detailer, which is a little quicker way to do it. Draft, publish, yes. Go back to the detailer, spool 10. Publish. Yes, I want to publish it. <clears throat> so now all those detailer drafts that we created are all published to the package. So if I click package and click package drawings, I'm going to click on this client drawing. I only have spool six added to this. Uh, drawing, but I don't want to click add spool 
to map the other spools onto this drawing because we created them using the detailer. And that's how we got the automatic uh, coordinates and everything. So it's also how we got the automatic continuations. So I don't want to add another spool to that drawing. I'm going to search for spool 8. I'm going to add it to the drawing. Here, let's go to map links and let's make this a little nicer. Then I'm going to search for spool 7, which is this one down here. I'm going to search for spool 9, which is this one up here. I think this one was spool 10. Let's make sure. Yes, yeah, spool 10. So I'm going to go back to that drawing. I'm going to search for spool 10, just like I'm searching for any other drawing. And I'm going to add it to that strainer. Uh, so now that you have these spools marked up on here, if I click on one of these, instead of opening it in the detailer, I'm going to open it in the mapper. Uh, let's say the welder has completed these two one inch socket welds. I'm going to turn these in and inspect them. Now if I go back to that first drawing you can see my progress bar is at 100%. Two of two welds welded while the other ones are at 0%. So that's the very basics of how to use